Hey, hey, come on, wake up, uh, wake up. Uh, oh, thank God you're all right. Ah, okay, done. My leg is jammed. It's jammed in here. Here, let me help. Ah, ah, it's broken. It's broken. Got stuck under the bloody rudder pedal. Anything I can do? Ah, uh, uh, see if there's a first aid kit around, will you? Should be behind my seat. Give me a moment. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh, Sounds painful. Ah, oh, that's better. Oh, it's not gonna last forever, though. Oh. Where are we? Hopefully not out of range of the radio masts. Oh. Mayday, mayday. This is Alpha Romeo Lima. Crashed south of Deception. Coordinates roughly 82 south, 19 west. Come on. Hello, Faraday, do you read? There's nothing. Do you think you can move? Your Lord. Uh, puts pay to flying out of here. I'm good for nothing like this. And the plane's in no fit state either. Oh, I reckon I saved her from the worst of it, actually. She's gonna need some help getting her up again. Hey, 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 you see that up there? We were about to fly over one of the British outposts, a deception point. That should be it there. Maybe they've got a doctor. Uh, yeah, I, I think I can see it. So can you make it? Make it? It's, it's freezing out there. Well, you'd rather stay in this tin can and we both freeze to death. Uh, we, we, we could wait. Oh, come on, mate. Your fairy godmother's not going to magically appear. Nobody knows we're here. Oh, come on, mate. I've done my best to get us down in one piece. Time to be a man, eh? How far away do you think it is? It could be five, ten miles. Can you make it? We don't really have a choice, do we? Yeah. Good man. How will I find my way back? Uh, uh, there might be something here. I, uh, keep a box for emergencies. I think this qualifies. Uh, flares. Keep an eye out. I'll open this window and send one up on the hour. I'll help you get your bearings. Hey! Hey, you here? Uh, I'm here. I'm here! Just don't lose yourself out there, okay? Just keep straight. Uh, I'll be back as soon as I can. You just... Mind that leg. Yeah, thanks. Hey, you watch out, okay? It's ten below zero. Uh, wish me luck. Yeah. Best of British luck.
Oh, here, let me help. Oh, I think I can manage. No, honestly, it's fine. <laughs> oh. Not as easy as it looks. Oh, dear. Let me give you a hand. Oh, no, no, no. I, I can do it. Um... It's easier with both of us, don't you think? All right. Um, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> that's my fault. There's too many books. Oh, that's what's in here. Oh. Well, uh, there you go. Teamwork. Not a problem at all. Thank you. Right, um, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Oh, do you join me? Well, I don't think you'd have much luck finding another free carriage. Uh, all right, thank you. Your work? My students. They haven't learned the art of editing just yet. Still, someone's got to mark it. You're, you're marking all of that? I'm not trying to. I can't complain. When I was a student, my professor said to me, you don't expect me to mark all that, do you? So I won't complain now they're handing me all this. Well, um, feel free to complain to me if it helps. <laughs> it might, thank you. Uh, long journey? Yes, all the way from Edinburgh. Where are you headed? Cambridge. And you are too, I can see that. It's, it, it's the tie, isn't it? <laughs> it's not that. I prefer Priestley's ideas about weather patterns, personally. I beg your pardon? Your book. It fell out onto the seat. Oh, ah. <laughs> Would you mind if I take a look? Oh, yes. <clears throat> Formulation of complex cloud patterns. G.B. McNeil. I found it rather heavy going myself. You've... you've read it? I had to set this one for my undergraduates. Not that any of them probably read the bloody thing. The fact that you've got it on you makes me think you're not a student. You're lecturing too, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. Uh, how long have you been here? It'll be my second year. Uh, Peter, how do you do? Clara, how do you do? Oh, you're a bookmark. Oh, oh, uh, don't worry, it's just a, just a telegram. Oh, you're a, you're a telegram, it's sorry. Nothing. It's nothing, just something from my professor. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to see that, was I? It's completely fine, really. Professors do love a telegram, don't they? Your son's just like my old one. My office, we need to talk about your work. Like we're still at school. I'm sure you're not really in trouble. It's mad, isn't it? All these old men having a final say over our future. Deciding whether our work's good enough. How it all rests on that one final paper we need just to get anywhere. I know. I, I, I know. I wish they'd actually come and see me teaching. I, I don't know why they don't. I'd love to go and see other lecturers if I were them. I should do it more often. Uh, you'd be welcome to come to mine. Oh, thank you. Uh, if there's space, perhaps. How many students make it to them? Uh, um, three. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm sure they're a lucky bunch. Maybe you'll see for yourself. Maybe I will. Oh. oh, there's a red light up ahead. I suppose I can get a little more work done. Um, let me know when we're coming up to the bright lights of Cambridge, won't you?
Hello, is anyone here? Anybody here? So, do come and see me if you have any questions on the lecture. One or two would be nice. You can leave if you like. It's over. Or do you have a question? I do, in fact. Uh, yes? Are we allowed to visit other people's lectures? Oh, oh, it's you. Um, I, I didn't see you up there. You decided to come. I did. Uh, liked it? I didn't think you were too bad. Huh. Well, um, I'm glad you thought so. The others don't seem to care so much. Make a run for it as soon as they can. Well, they're a loss. I wouldn't worry. People all seem a bit jumpy at the moment. I found it fascinating. Finding a way to trace the paths of all the world's clouds across the sky. It, it is fascinating, you're right. It's quite poetic, I thought. Oh, you were paying attention too. In, in theory, it, it's great. It's, um, just need to prove it's possible. It's, uh, taking a while. A wonderful subject for your paper, I would have thought. <clears throat> yes, you would have thought. Well, I've had no luck with mine, if it's any consolation. Just getting anything approved is a nightmare. Still, they can't say no once they've found my beautiful subject, like you. It's true, I am a, an excellent subject. <laughs> Hang on, Dr. Hamilton hasn't finished in here yet. Sorry about that, a bit too keen sometimes. Sounds like a passionate bunch. You'd be welcome to stay if you like. Oh, uh, well, why, why not? Thank you. Wonderful. I'll just go see to this mob and give you time to gather your papers.
You've come at the right time. England are 37 for four. Terrible said to the first. Anyway, you said you wanted to see me about something? Yes. Something you wanted to let me know. Hello? Hello? Hello, can anyone hear me? Come in. Hello? I said you can come in. Doors open. Peter! Oh, uh, hello there. Uh, sorry. Ah, good to see some work being done. Good show. My goodness, it's gloomy in here. No, do sit down. You got my note, I presume? Note? The telegram. Well, I'm sure you've been very busy, which explains why I haven't heard from you. So, seems I have to come and pay you a visit instead. Still plugging away, I see. Mind if I take a look? It's still very much work in progress. <clears throat> and most of them are, are just uh, weather readings from my contact in South America. Not much to read yet. You will tell me when you've got something, won't you? As your professor, I do need to be kept abreast of things. You'll be the first to know, I assure you. I do hope so. Good grief! I'm not surprised you're getting nothing done with all this racket. What is it this time? Oh. More of them today, I see, getting ready for another march, I suppose. And I can't quite believe how many women are out there. The more they let in, the less serious studying seems to get done in this place. Not built for academic work, I fear. I really don't see why they want to join this band of Soviet sympathizers. Soviet sympathizers? Well, you know what I mean. Anyone who's for nuclear disarmament is anti-British, as far as I can see. Can't stand all this politics in my college. Wanted to talk to you about that, in fact. To me? That's right. Sit down. What worries me is that all that is distracting people from the very good academic work we do here. This is where I really do need your help, Peter. What can I do about it? As you know, I have some friends in high places. I need to persuade these people that this college deserves to survive, deserves the reputation we've built over the years. Now, there's a lot of talk suggesting we're a soft touch. <laughs> a breeding ground for communists. I need to show we're serious about what we do and what I need from you is something publishable. 
Well, I, I hope I can do that. I don't doubt it. Make sure it is good, something first rate. This is a great institution, Peter. I need to prove its worth, and I need you to prove yours too. Prove my worth? It's been three years now. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Completely. I I'll do my best. It will be a first-rate piece of work. Thank you. I look forward to seeing it. I'm sure you're hoping you don't have to stay in this dark little room forever. And I'm sure you'll rather leave it after a well-deserved promotion. That's all. Oh, uh... One more thing. The atmosphere here, things have been a little fraught. You must have noticed it's not just those protests that I'm concerned about. You know all about the business with the Cambridge Four, I presume. I, I don't, actually. You don't? A Soviet spyry. Recruited right here in Cambridge. Passing secrets to the Russians for years, and we knew nothing about it. The papers are having a field day with it. They used to hang for things like this. You think something's going on? They think the Cambridge Four might now be the Cambridge Five. They still don't know who the fifth member is yet. I need to be absolutely sure we are on our guard. So I'd like you to keep an eye out. You would tell me if you saw anything suspicious, wouldn't you? I can trust you on that. Absolutely. You can trust me. Glad to hear it. I'll see myself out. You carry on. Peter here. Peter. Peter, thank God you made it. Are you there? Is there a doctor? Can someone come and pick me up? Floyd, something's not right. I, I think... I think something's happened here. Something's happened? What, what do you mean? Uh, well, there's... There's nobody here. The place is abandoned. Hello? Floyd, it's not just that the place is empty. Ev everyone's things are here. There are just no people. It's like, they it's like they've all vanished. Well, they might be out on some kind of exercise, a research trip, something like that. Take them a vehicle and head it out. Well, maybe, but there's a vehicle here that's been abandoned too. That doesn't sound right. And wherever they went, they, they went in a hurry. Uh, there's footprints everywhere, and they left a mess in their living quarters. Broken glass, uh, an overturned chair, that sort of thing. Like, like they've been frightened? What, maybe? Or, or maybe there was an emergency, someone got sick or something like that. Oh, listen to me. I don't like the sound of this. I want you to get out of there as quick as you can, you hear me? Out, in, out into that again? No. Where would I go, back to you? No, no, don't come back, Peter. Took you two hours to get there. You come back here and then where are we? Back to square one. Peter, listen carefully. I don't know for sure, but it's possible that the base you were in might have been attacked. Attacked? Th this is a research station. Who would attack this place? Soviets. No. Don't, don't be ridiculous, Floyd. We're, we're not at war. The Cold War hasn't been so cold around here recently. People are ticky. I've heard stories of shots being fired. And you can kill a dozen men down here and no one will know about it. Floyd, you're making me nervous. I've met the guys who work at Deception Point, mate. They run a tight ship. It's not like them to leave it completely deserted without telling anyone. And now you're telling me there are signs of a struggle? 
You can't rule it out. I don't like this. I... I think I should come back. No. No, there's a chance I can raise someone from here, but if you come back and I can't, then we're back at square one. They'd have to have us both on their case. Look, I'll keep trying on the radio. You've got to move on. Get out of there, quickly! What about you? First things first, don't worry about me. You want more help if you keep yourself safe. Oh, you're in the radio hut, right? Anything in there which could help tell where we are? There's a map here. A map? Right. Well, what's on it? I, I can see where I am. The base at Deception Point. Okay, okay, great. Anything more from there? There are more buildings to the north. Do you know what they are? More buildings? I know the Norwegians are stationed out here too. That, that'll be the Norwegian base. Are you sure the Norwegians would help us? Got them. I've got them. Well, that's something. Let's hope they fill the tank up. Can you see a route on the map? Any landmarks to follow? Um, up ahead, there's there's some kind of huge rock marked on here. A c cathedral rock. Looks like the highest point around. Maybe I'll be able to see the Norwegian base from there. Sounds like that's your first destination. Peter, can you see anything you can use as a weapon? I've got my hands, that's all. Well, don't go searching for one if there's nothing else in there. You don't know when they might come back. Get to the vehicle and head to that rock as quickly and as quietly as you can, all right? Just make sure you send those flares up so I can find you again. Floyd, are you still there? Uh, uh, sorry, I hit the roof, my leg. Look, don't hang about, Peter. Get going, for Christ's sake. I'll keep broadcasting on this frequency when I can. Try and pick it up again when you get to the base. I will, and, and remember those flares. Yeah, I heard you. Look, I've got to go. You just get to that cathedral rock. Over and out. Thanks for picking me up like that. I'm absolutely soaked. I must have looked a terrible state. You must be freezing. I don't know what happened. The bus just didn't turn up. Sorry, I think I'm sitting on something. Oh, sorry, it's your papers. Oh, I haven't got them all wet. Oh. Don't, don't worry about it. So this is your grand tome about the clouds. <laughs> Would you mind if I take a look? Of course. I mean, if you can understand them. Excuse me? I'm sorry, my goodness. What? Do you have a right to be here? You know, I have earned my place. 
What are you talking about? Well, maybe this is a bad idea. I don't want to read them anyway if you don't think I can understand them. No, 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 no. I, I meant they're probably illegible. I meant you might not be able to read them. That's all. Oh, oh sorry. Just, oh, I get that kind of thing a lot. I'm a bit sensitive. Crosswise. I thought, I thought you morphed into my old professor there. My office. See me. Anyway, sorry. As I said, don't worry. Um, <clears throat> t take a look if you like. Oh, uh, thank you. I can see you're an excellent note taker. Well, the rest is probably classified, <laughs> top secret. And where is yours, may I ask? May I read that? Stop it. You haven't started it, I know. I will. I haven't had three years. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bit low. I'm just a bit tired at the moment. My proposal was rejected again yesterday. It needs more work. You can talk to me, you know. I know what it's like trying to find the right subject. I'm starting to wonder if I'll ever find it. My friend Molly's nearly finished hers, and here I am, not even at the starting line. Well, that makes two of us. Thanks. <laughs> Doctor. I'll, uh, I'll just put you safe down here. <laughs> Cambridge. Even on a day like this, I do love this journey. In my car, you mean? Yes. Well, I'm enjoying it too. Picking you up in this mighty steed. <laughs> oh, yes. He needs a big bus when you can have a car like this. Your presence tells me this is obviously better for picking up ladies. Oh, well, you can just about foot one in if that's what you mean. Anyway, this bus will do just fine. Thanks again for getting me out of the rain like that. It was... Don't mention it. No, I... no it was an inconvenience. It... it won't happen again. the BBC Live program. Here is the news. Talks began today in Washington between Britain, the United States and Soviet Russia over the renewal of the Antarctic Treaty, which forbids any acts of military aggression in Antarctica. Reports of recent skirmishes on the continent have established the need to reaffirm the worldwide commitment to peace. All eyes will be on Russia, whose reported reluctance to rejoin the talks is a point of concern for the British government. In a statement read outside the White House, Prime Minister Macmillan called on Russia to engage in the talks wholeheartedly to ensure a lasting peace in the nuclear era. bus? What's that, five, six in a row now? I don't know, I counted seven maybe. It'll never happen again. Oh wait, oh look, there's Molly! Well, I, I haven't seen her in ages. Can you just pull over and we can say hello? can't miss us all today. <laughs> is this your handsome bus driver? I didn't call him that. Molly, this is Peter. Peter, this is Molly. I've heard. 
Heard what? You'll be joining us, I hope. Joining you here outside? On the big march? From Aldermaston, the atomic weapons factory? This time we're all going to start there, then march on London. Straight to Parliament. Tens of thousands of us. They'll have to listen to us this time. Four days walk, isn't that right? Oh, that's a long walk. Worth it to save the world, don't you think? It's a waste of time, isn't it? If this is a waste of time, I'd like to know what really was worth someone's time. Oh, sorry, uh, Peter, Molly is a lecturer at the college too, when she's not showing me the ropes or working on her opus. Oh, that's all done now. The paper's published. Oh, that's wonderful. A good riddance too. I couldn't bear having it hanging over me any longer. <clears throat> uh, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. I can focus on this for a while. Much more important. Do you think this will make a difference? It jolly well has to, don't you think? Considering what's at stake, we're all under threat. I would have thought as a man of science you'd know all about it. Clara mentioned you'd been studying radiation carried by the clouds. You told her that? Oh, I didn't know it was an official secret. No, no, it's, it's not. It's not. That's... it's fine. The radiation is what's terrifying. One hydrogen bomb could kill one million people in an instant. But then the radiation spreads and could kill millions more. Slowly this time. The British government is building more bombs when they should be doing the opposite. Disarming. Setting an example to the world. It must be more complicated than that. Wouldn't the Soviets think we were weak if we did that? We're not naive, you know. We want the three sides to stop entrenching themselves. All this posturing of theirs can only end one way. It's got to be unilateral nuclear disarmament. Otherwise, every day we are one step closer to the end. Well, I agree, although with any luck they'll thrash it out. And what if they don't? Right, uh, I've got a lecture to give. Peter, would you mind if I had a lift for the last mile? Of course not. It was good to meet you, Peter. Good to meet you too. You're coming on the march, aren't you, Clara? I wouldn't miss it for anything. And you, Peter? Wouldn't miss it. And in the meantime, I'm sure Clara will take very good care of you. She will? That's enough, Molly Shanahan. We'll be off now. You go and get your bus, Clara. Ding, ding! <sighs> Impressive, isn't she? No more than you are. You know what I'm gonna say? I've got a pretty good idea. You need to get out more. I will, I promise. Good to hear, old chap, but we've heard it before. I have to say, I've never really understood it. Here you are writing about clouds, and yet you never see the sky. Yeah, very good. But it won't last forever. I'm. I'm really getting somewhere this time. Well, let's see some of these words then, shall we? Come on, man or a mouse. It's the way it's top secret, is it? You can trust me. <sighs> what do you think, Sam? I 
I'm sure some of it is very good. Here. Some of it? Well, that's reassuring. Don't worry, old chap. Well, we'll hit that wall sometimes. It's all part of writing a paper. Oh, now, come on, don't be so modest, Sam. You dashed yours off in a few months. Well, maybe I was fortunate, but the point is... The point is, you set your sights straight and true, sat down and wrote the damn thing. It wasn't quite like that. Well, you did it, and now here you are, senior lecturer. Which makes two of us. Ah. <sighs> Did Joseph not mention he got a promotion too? It does tend to slip his mind for a few seconds occasionally. Well, you know what could be open to him if he gets this right and gets promotion? His own department, eventually. Professorship. You can't reach those heights if you stay in this hovel for the rest of your life. Well, that's true, but I My point quite was put that it... saying to Peter it's all part of the process is just kind words. What we need to do is help our poor friend here be a man and write. All right. All right, maybe I could use a little help here and there, but I don't need any pity. Oh, it's not pity. We believe in you. We just don't want to come back and have the same conversation. Just don't start again. That would be a disaster, wouldn't it, Sam? I think he's right, Peter. I know it's tempting to want to forget everything and start again on a blank page, but then you're risking making the same mistakes all over again. You no, know, sometimes it's better to see where you've gone wrong, that's all. That it help you. Good things might come of it. Good things like a promotion, I might add. Like Joseph says, don't start again. All right, then. What do you suggest, Sam? I know what you need. Go on, then. What? What you need is some inspiration. Those... Three new girls. You know the ones. Undergraduates. They'll be at the Fox and Hounds this evening, and so, my good man, shall we? Eight o'clock. See you there? No, no, I should work. You should come. But if you can't, that's one girl for Sam and two for me. We'll buy you a pint anyway. See you later, old chap. Good luck with it. We'll see you later. Don't be shy, Peter. Come along. Man or a mouse? Oh, there you are. Seven o'clock, I thought you said. Oh, fashionably late. <laughs> Come sit, I got you some tea. Oh, great idea, thank you. <laughs> uh, sugar for you? Uh, one, please. Okay. Oh my goodness, you're soaked. Where's your jacket? Oh, uh, well, uh, not on me, of course. Um, mind on other things. The paper, again? Still all-consuming? All-consuming? Oh, I don't blame you. I've been thinking about it quite a bit, too. Uh, you have? Ab about my paper? Yes. To tell you the truth, I'm... Rather stuck. I gathered. Could you finish it for me, do you think? I thought you could handle it. Uh, I can, I can. It's... Well, it's a, it's a beautiful idea. I think that's why it stuck with me. I know. I know. It, it could be something great. It could. It would be like <laughs> having a superpower, being able to predict the paths of the clouds. A next step, control the weather. <laughs> you could be Cloud Man. Are you taking this seriously? Well, you could predict when it's going to rain, at least. <laughs> this weather reminds me of home. Was it this miserable all the time? No. Although Edinburgh always looked better in the rain to me, so that's why I choose to remember it. That's where you grew up, isn't it? That's right. I had a wee cottage in the Highlands, too. Our parents would take us up there once in a while. Us? Brothers and sisters? One brother. Older. Are you alright? Yes. Sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to pry. It's just, um... He was killed in a motorcycle accident near the cottage when he was uh, oh, 18. So sorry. It's not your fault. 
Slave? Or, well, the opposite. <clears throat> How old were you when it happened? Uh, 16. But still, I have a lot of happy memories about him. Oh, at the cottage, he always used to get up early, go out into the forest, bring back armloads of wood, wood for the fire. It was sweet, really. The house was already warm for us. I like the sound of doing that. I could do that. Grab an axe, go out each morning, chop wood. So you could be the woodsman, then. Oh, better than the cloud man. Stronger. Oh, no, I, I, I like cloud man. So, these clouds, you're a beautiful subject. What do you think you need? Oh, well, that's simple. More readings to work with. Hmm, sounds achievable. Well, in theory, yes, but they need to be first-hand, verifiable. All right. I take it it all has to be taken somewhere where the readings aren't affected by other factors? Sounds like you've got it as much as I have. Maybe. The thing is, it needs to be somewhere very remote. And I need to be there for a while, you see, to get enough readings. Mm, that makes sense. And I suppose the university budget doesn't exactly allow you to travel the world. Maybe... What? Well, that cottage I mentioned, it's in the middle of nowhere, a highest place for miles around. And now would be the time to go with summer coming up. All summer free? Well, I'd have to check with my father, but it's remote. It's just a little place in the woods with a log fire and not much else. But if that's what you're looking for... I am. That's just the kind of place I've been searching for. Promise me you're serious about this? Oh, I promise you that. Mm, promise me that. Anyway, no more past tense. No more past tense, eh? Hmm. Sorry, I didn't know how I felt about the cottage until I started talking about it. I shouldn't have said anything. You don't have to go. Thanks for understanding. But still, it sounds perfect for the work. I think I'd be able to find somewhere else, you know. I must be able to. It's just... I don't know what my father would say about me bringing an unmarried man up there. You're worried about what your father might think? No, no, not that. It's just not exactly Morden. Not exactly ringing the changes like malls. Without her father even knows what she's up to. You saw Malls on that march, didn't you? Striding forward at the front. Quite the force of nature. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you think the bus would make it there? The bus? That would cost a fortune. Not that bus, silly. <laughs> you know, your bus. Ding, ding. Oh, oh, the mighty steed, of course. Well, the roads are pretty rough. Would you cope with it? We can always try. Oh, careful. We want to make it in one piece. This really is the middle of nowhere. Just keep driving. I know it seems to go on forever. Just trust me. The cottage is only a few miles away now. How are you feeling about this? Oh, I, I, I'm fine. Okay, a bit strange, to be honest. Like I'm about to step back in time. I haven't been here in so long. I'm a bit nervous. I, I don't know. I, I don't quite know if things will feel different coming back. I hope you like it. Oh, I, I'm sure I will. And, and thank you for asking your father. I know this is a big thing. <laughs> well, I told him I was taking a friend. I didn't mention you were a man. Oh, uh, do, you, do you think he'd disapprove? Not exactly, no. Well, he is very old-fashioned, but... Well, thank you for coming along. Well, in, in, inviting me and coming along. Oh, no. I mean, without me, how'd you find it for a start? I couldn't rightly let you run away all by yourself. So you're running away with me? Stop it. This is purely professional, isn't it? We could run away. Ditch the paper, 
live in the woods? You are being presumptuous, aren't you? No, I'm here to help. You'll need help with the equipment and recording all the data, all that. I couldn't leave you stranded up here in the middle of nowhere. I'd, I'd build us a shelter, be the man of the woods. Oh, he's back, is he? The woodsman. I'm telling you, I could do that. Just be the kind of man who remembers to fill up the tank when we're off to the middle of nowhere. Well, I am. I hope this isn't a big mistake. This is the BBC. Here is the news. The talks in Washington over the renewal of the Antarctic Treaty were in deadlock last night, with Soviet Russia threatening to walk out of discussions early. The new president, Lyndon B. Johnson, made an impassioned speech during which he criticized the Soviets' aggressive stance and reasserted the need for compromise. The president described the Russians as playing a lethal hand and asserted that continuing to do so would risk leading the world into war.